the dinosaurs didn't know extinction was coming. They carried on romping and stomping as the sky turned to fire and that meteor took out much of Mexico. In a similar vein, we doubt anyone at Aston Martin has been brave enough to tell the venerable vanquished that it's living at the far end of an overdraft of borrowed time. This is a car that sits on an architecture that already has been replaced and which is still powered by the gloriously anachronistic naturally aspirated V12 that Aston has been using for nearly two decades. But while the new, turbocharged DB11 is an empirically better car by almost any metric you choose to employ, it can't match the exclusivity of Aston's range topper. Buyers who opt for the Vanquish will have to find an extra $80,000 to get a car with less equipment and less power than its supposedly junior sister DB11, which costs only $214,820. But they will find themselves at the pinnacle of Mount Aston. It's impossible not to see the continued appeal of this grandest of grand tourers, a car that makes a Bentley Continental GT look like something bought at Sears. Now, the Vanquish has been given a final freshening and the deployment of the S badges that Aston reserves for its ultimate incarnations. The Vanquish S gets more power, although the increase must be well within the margin of variation of the non-S's engine. A fractionally freer flowing intake system aims to sharpen the top end in the 5.9 litre V12 and takes the output rating up 12 horsepower to 580 horsepower, still 20 horses less than the new twin turbocharged V12 in the DB11. Strangely, Aston claims a higher, 595 horsepower output for the engine in European spec, although it says the engine is in the same state of tune and offers no other explanation. Changes made to the Vanquish S's chassis, although modest, have had a greater, and counterintuitive, effect. Spring rates have been stiffened by 10%, these on top of the 10% increase the Vanquish was given in 2015, and there's also a brawnier rear anti-roll bar and firmer suspension bushings. Yet expectations that this toughening will increase the hardness of the Aston's core seem off the mark, it actually feels noticeably more compliant than before, riding out bumps and rough or road surfaces with impressive disdain. We're told the broadened band width should be mostly credited to a smarter algorithm controlling the Bilstein adaptive dampers, allowing them to react more quickly.